Hey guys, good morning. We are here in South Carolina with some of our very dearest friends. Um, and so we have been able to escape some of the storm damage and all the loss of power and things, but we are praying for all of you back home um, who are enduring some hot, sweaty nights and a lot of limb pickup in the yard. And so we've been praying for you, we miss you, um, and hope that you guys are doing well and able to worship with us this morning. So we're gonna start off and we're gonna sing the chorus again of Oh Praise the Name of the Lord Our God. And then we're gonna sing God is So Good. Y'all ready? Praise the name of the Lord our God. Oh, praise his name forevermore. For endless days we will sing your praise. Oh, Lord, oh, Lord our God. God. we have been doing the Ten Commandments that are in Exodus 20. These are the commandments that God gave to Moses on the mountain, and so we've been working our way through them. Who can remember one of the first four commandments? Sadie. Um, you shall have no other gods before me. You shall have no other gods before me. Really good. All right, Riley, what's the next one? Don't break the Father's name in vain. Is that one? It, no. it is. No, no, it no, is. No. Yes. We don't take our, the Lord's name in vain. That was one. Okay, so we have two of them. What are the other um, two? They deal with our relationship with the Lord. Don't take God's name in vain. Do not, do not, yes, do not make for yourself any graven images. And what are you supposed to do? What was the fourth one that we looked at? Remember the, the Sabbath day. Remember the Sabbath day to keep it holy. Very good. So those are the first four commandments, and those commandments all deal with our relationship with God, right? And that has to be grounded first before we can look at the next six commandments, okay? Because the next six commandments are all going to deal with our relationships with people, but our relationship with God has to be good before we can begin to have a relationship with people, okay? So what I'm going to do is I'm going to read to you the next two that we have, and so we're going to work on these this week until we have all ten done. So in verse 12 of Exodus 20, it says to honor your father and your mother so that you may have a long life in the land that the Lord your God is giving you. And then the next one is really simple. Three words. Do not murder. Okay? Do not murder. So um, God is telling us um, that we are to honor our fathers and our mothers. And then he's going to tell us do not murder. All right? So let's look at the first one. Honor your father and your mother. What do you think this one means? Sadie. Obey your parents. Okay, obey your parents. We do see that later on in the New Testament, those exact words, right? Riley, what do you think it means? Um, like, always do what they tell you because whenever you don't do it, you always end up getting hurt or something worse. Okay, really good. So God has given parents to us to help lead and guide and protect, right? And so when our parents are loving God, then our parents are able to love us well. And they're able to teach us. And that's God has instructed all parents. All parents are teachers. And so we're all teaching you the things of the Lord. Um, but I think what's interesting about this commandment is when a lot of people look at this commandment, they think that this one is kind of for the kids. You know, they think, honor your father and mother. It's almost like God was trying to slide one in there that was just for the kids. But the truth is, is that this commandment is just like the other nine and that it was given to the Israelites, which included lots and lots and lots of adults, okay? And so God has, it, this, this is not just a commandment for kids. This is also a commandment for me. This is a commandment for your daddy. And this is a commandment for all adults that we are to honor our fathers and our mothers. And part of the reason for that is because who are we always trying to glorify? With all of these commandments, who are we glorifying? God. God, right? Always glorifying God with these commandments. That is the main goal of these Ten Commandments. God is showing us how to live so that we might bring glory to His name and that we might be a light to the world, okay? So when the world looks at us and they see us honoring our mothers and our fathers, they see a picture 
of also what it would look like to honor God and just the way that we care for our families. So God cares for our families, okay? And so in the way that we honor our fathers and our mothers, ultimately, we are bringing glory to God because God cares about families. This is something he has called us to for obedience sake. And when we honor that, when we do that, we are bringing him glory, okay? And so we want the whole world to know the truth that God loves them. And so the main reason that we honor our fathers and the mothers, it's not just so we don't get hurt, even though a lot of times that's true, that our parents tell us things to protect us. But ultimately, the big picture is that God would be glorified in all the nations when they look at our families and see how we function and how we love one another. Um, you, you're, Because we know Christ, um, when you were born into our home, you were born as a part of a promise. And that promise is, is that we love God and we trust God and we obey God and his steadfast love. He says that it extends to the generations and you guys are a part of that promise. And so um, my hope is that as you obey me and as I love you and lead you and as um, just the same way that it worked with, with myself and with my own parents, um, that we will continue to experience the Lord's grace in our lives because of his faithfulness, not our faithfulness, but because of his faithfulness. Now, let's move to do not murder. Do you feel like this is something that you struggle with? No. Have you ever thought about murdering somebody? No. No, never? Sadie, what about you? Not even Jude? Never? <laughs> right, okay. So the, what's, what's interesting about this commandment too is a lot of people kind of jump over this one. They're like, do not murder. And they think, okay, well, this doesn't really apply to me because of course I'm not going to murder anybody, okay? And so first of all, let's just look at murder as it is. When someone murders another person, it's intentionally taking someone else's life, okay? That, now when you take someone else's life, did the person who died bear the image of God? Yes, because every person ever born bears the image of God. So if someone intentionally, purposefully takes the life of another, they have not just taken that person's life and they haven't just hurt that person or that person's family, but ultimately they have offended a holy God who put his image on the one who was murdered. Yes, Satan. Like Cain and Abel. Exactly, like Cain and Abel, okay? Well, so be the first man to ever... Yes, yes, when Cain murdered Abel, that was the first murder. And so, and since then, my goodness, there have been untold murders throughout the world. Um, and God has been horrified at all of them because God has called us not to murder because he has put his image and his dignity on people. And so he wants us to have that same respect, okay? And so sometimes we think, even though we think, man, this could have no bearing on us, let's think about people in our lives right now who are affected by murder. Who could, who could be affected? And maybe it's not someone you know personally, but just stories that you hear. Do you know anyone? The, like, the people in Jordan or the people in um, other countries who are Christians, people who don't like the Christians, they go out and try to find them and kill them. Okay, so there are believers who are being persecuted in other places. And some people, they're not even, even though they're not believers, um, they they're, live in other countries, and there have been genocides, and genocide is when you kill like a mass amount of people at one time, and so there are a lot of refugees who have had to leave their home because they're at the risk of being murdered, and so God calls us to care for the foreigner. He calls for, what, Sadie, which one were you going to say? Uh, the United States, I would have some people outside of China, you know, like just get people off of their Okay, when there are wicked governments who try to go and to kill people, that's right, we're to stand up against wicked governments, we're to stand up um, for the foreigner. What about the unborn babies who are still in their mama's wombs? Okay, God cares about those babies and he, he, he longs for those babies to live. And so we stand up for the rights um, of the unborn. We stand up for the rights of the poor. People should not die simply because they don't have a lot of money. Um, people should not die because they're oppressed, because they don't have a lot of power. And so, um, and people should not die because of the, the way that they look, right? If they have a different color skin or if they have a disability, 
no one, no one should ever be at risk of being murdered um, because of something about them, whether it's their religion or their, their race or um, their ability or disability or where they live. Um, because God has put his image on people, we are to care about the lives of all people. So that's one part of do not murder, okay? The next part is Jesus. When Jesus comes, Jesus is going to explain to us further in the Sermon on the Mount in Matthew 5 what it means to do not murder. And so we're going to look at Matthew 5, um, verse 21 and 22. Jesus says this, You have heard that it was said to our ancestors, Do not murder, and whoever murders will be subject to judgment. But I tell you, everyone who is angry with his brother will be subject to judgment. And whoever says to his brother, Fool, will be subject to the Sanhedrin. And whoever says, You moron, will be subject to hellfire. So what Jesus is saying is, Not only do you not murder but you can't even hate someone in your heart or you're guilty of murder, okay? Now, do we think of hating someone as the same as murder? No, no a lot of times we don't think that those two are equal, but Jesus is showing us where does murder actually begin? Does murder start with our hands? Mm -hmm. It starts in our hearts. Murder happens here because we begin to despise people. And when we get angry at people and then we allow that anger to fester, we begin to accuse them, we despise them, and ultimately we begin to think of them as less than human. And then when that happens, we are capable of murder, that kind of evil. And sometimes we think that that's an evil that belongs to someone else, but it's not true. That kind of evil can exist in the heart of every person except for the grace of God, right? And so how does this point us to the truth? We recognize that Jesus Christ on the cross, he took on all of our malice, which is our, our envy and our hate and the way that we despise one another. Jesus took all of that on himself um, and he died for it so that he could offer us forgiveness and because he offers forgiveness to us, now we are able to therefore then go and offer forgiveness to others. And so what these commandments are telling us, number one, we are to honor our father and our mother because that is the picture of a family um, and it is a picture of, of what, how a family loves one another to a lost world. It honors God when we honor our mothers and our fathers. And this likewise, when we do not murder, it honors God because it shows dignity to people. And it shows a value for life. And God loves life. God loves people so much that he was willing to give his one and only son um, to die to take our sins for us. And what a huge, huge gift that was. Okay? And so, now we have six commandments. We have, you shall have no other gods before me. You shall not put your father's name in vain. Don't, yeah, do not take the Lord's name in vain. That's the third one. The second one is, do not make for yourself any graven image. Remember the Sabbath to keep it holy. Remember that our rest is found in Christ. The next one is, honor your father and your mother. Very good. And the last one is, do not murder. All right, good job, girls. Let us pray. Riley, will you close this, please? Dear God, thank you for today, Jesus. Thank you for your love. Jesus, I just pray as this um, Sunday goes on that, that you will just um, make it glorifying to you, God. I pray that um, Pastor Bart does a good job preaching. Jesus, thank you for letting us be able to do this. It's in your precious and wonderful name. Amen. Amen. Amen.